Hey guys, this is going to be a first impressions video of the newest Paper Mario game, Color Splash. And let's just get this out of the way before anything else that I was extremely hesitant about this game. I am still recovering over the bad taste that was left from Sticker Star. And um, the trailers and stuff didn't really make this game look phenomenal. It made the game look kind of boring made it kind of like gimmicky um yeah I wasn't super excited how about that but I bought it anyway because obviously I'm a sucker and I will buy every Paper Mario game because that's how much this series means to me and so I am like uh, first world ish I've gotten like maybe five hours into the game and it's it's actually surprised me surprisingly Surprised. Surprising. Um, the game isn't horrible, and there's specific reasons why it's not horrible that I've been thinking about, so I thought I'd just make a video talking about it. And I'm sure everyone's heard about it if you're following any kind of video game thing. Everyone's saying pleasantly surprised with... Oops, sorry. Pleasantly surprised with Color Splash. And, um... So, but why is that? Why is everyone pleasantly surprised with Color Splash? Okay, basically, the issues with Sticker Star were enormous. There were multiple issues. It wasn't just one issue. It wasn't just the story. It wasn't just the, the toads. The toads were, would have been fine if they were given the proper attention they should have been given. And um, Sticker Star just didn't have that charm, that Paper Mario charm that a uh, Paper Mario game should have, I guess. Um... Sticker Star's battle system was very, very much lacking in every department. It just was, it was just not fun. <laughs> I think I've talked about this before, but battles were kind of like pointless, and you could skip them. And there was no, there was the stickers were just glorified items, and it, you didn't have any stickers. You were like fucked, and it was just, it was just not great. Everything was kind of retuned in that game, so. You had more health, you did more damage, you took more damage, but things were more inconsistent, so it, was, it wasn't it was like, you knew how much damage something was going to do, but it's sort of random. You'd find enemies that did one damage near the end of the game, you'd find enemies that did 100 damage or sometimes, you know, there were some gimmicky moments with stuff. It, it didn't really feel like your level, even if you had a level, would have mattered in the game. I didn't really feel like your abilities and your stickers, like, your ability to have a proper set of stickers really mattered because, like, there was always a bigger, better sticker that just was the weakness of the enemy or something, you know? And action commands were uh, boggled down to, like, the easiest things ever. Nobody really talks about that, but the action commands in that game are so much easier than they are in the other games. Even in Super Paper Mario, where you had the stylish moves, those are pretty tight. You had to do those pretty well. This game, it's just nothing, man. It's just like, you just press A in, like, the frame of, like, six seconds, and you block, like, you block for a set amount of seconds. It's it's easy, and it was, it was easy in a bad way. I don't think it was, it didn't really seem like it was trying to be, like, it wasn't going for an easy game. It just treated the player kind of stupid. It was like, yeah... This is this is easy and this is stupid because you know this is just what it is. Like it was, it's weird. It's hard to explain, but basically the puzzles in the game were very hard and were complex and very stupid in my opinion. But when you have that kind of game with the battle system that's just so stupidly easy, and then when it's not stupidly easy, it's like stupidly hard. Where if you don't have the weakness to a boss or something, it like one shots you. So the game was horribly balanced and just a big mess. I don't know why I just ranted for like three minutes about that, but that's the gist of it. And the story and the plot and the characters were all missing. The charm was not there. The graphics were there and the music was there. It was just missing a lot of what makes a Paper Mario game good. And while Color Splash doesn't add all of the, doesn't fix all of those things, it definitely does fix some of those things. <laughs> And it's funny that once you fix some of those things, it's still a Paper Mario game at its core, and it's still very much worth playing. So basically, Color Splash functions basically the same way as Sticker Star did, where it has a lack of partners, a lack of experience, a lack of 
uh, cohesive world, whatever. It has like a world map. It's got um, a item, pseudo item based battle system. But it does some different things that make the game a little bit more interesting. It doesn't, I don't think it shoves as many, I, I'm not far enough to say it for sure. But I don't think it shoves as many gimmicks down your throat. I don't think the only way to beat a boss is through gimmicks. I don't think the only way to get through a puzzle is through like having a specific thing in a specific section. Very gimmicky feeling. It doesn't really feel like that. I haven't really come across stuff like that. A lot of the puzzles are more or less in the moment type of things. Like a toad will ask you to find something and you have to do that. Or um, I don't know. Some other things. <laughs> Not as backtracking everywhere. And um, the world feels a little bit more cohesive, I guess. It's a little bit more unconventional. Sticker Star was grass, desert, snow, the works, whatever. Very un unoriginal, I guess. Very boring. Same with uh, the Mario and Luigi spinoff, Paper Jam. was also really boring for that reason. But Sticker Star, or, yeah, wow. Color Splash seems to mix it up a little bit. And it does have... First world is whatever grass. The second, or there is a world with like beach. There's a world of snow. They have the generic things, but there's no designated world one. Really, it's like world one is a set section of the map that kind of like spans out to different parts. Like, and from what I can tell, I'm just going to assume that I'm almost done with world one or chapter one, pseudo chapter one. It doesn't actually blatantly say it, but basically. And I've been to, like, the mountains, the beach, and the grasslands, and, like, a town, and had, like, numerous different activities in each one, and it's actually pretty entertaining because of that. It keeps it interesting, and it's it's fun because of the places you're exploring, and also, it really does encourage exploring. Sticker Star sort of did, but it was, it was pretty linear, and there wasn't much to do. This game is a little bit bigger, and... There's little spaces where you can paint things, and they're all over the place, so you can knock yourself out and paint everything and try to paint the whole world again, and it's pretty satisfying. Um, enemies have been boiled down to shy guys for the most part, as of right now, and um, they're fine. I, I am not a huge... Like, I miss the specific characters. I more more miss the partners and the side characters. But like the specific enemies, like the shady paratroopas and the shady shy guys and whatever. Those guys, I, I'm not like I don't mind if they use generic Mario enemies as long as they do it right. And the shy guys are funny. The shy guys have dialogue. They're not just blatant enemies. They're kind of like a almost like a subspecies. Like they're all doing the same thing and you don't really know why. It, it's funny. And while the toads are the only characters the Toads have specific personalities, and they're pretty funny. I think they're better than they were in Sticker Star. They kind of felt a little boring in Sticker Star. There are some genuinely funny moments in this game with the Toads, and it's it's actually been extremely surprising. And the only original character that they added was the Paint Bucket guy, who is like your little right-hand man. Um, Sticker Star had a crown. Oh, God. And um, this game has a paint bucket, and the paint bucket is really funny, and it has some really clever dialogue, and it's actually really entertaining to read. It's probably the funniest Paper Mario game, I think I can say. Maybe not the funniest Mario game, but one of the funniest Paper Mario games. The dialogue is just so clever. And um, in terms of the battle system, it hasn't really gotten any better, I guess, but it's sort of more of, not put to the side, but maybe it's just the way I'm playing it, but it's just, I haven't really taken it that seriously. I don't really care about, like, managing my cards, I'm just kind of throwing cards out there, as, like, because you get cards instead of stickers, and the cards you fill with paint to use. So paint is basically mana, and you can get paint everywhere, so it's not, like, a difficult thing to get paint, but, um, basically cards use paint, you use those moves to get paint, you get more paint from killing enemies, you get more money from killing enemies, you get extra paint slots, like there's like an experience bar that fills up that gives you extra paint slot, which is the closest thing to experience we've gotten in a Paper Mario game in a long time, which is really interesting. Um, and that's, that's kind of it, like there's not much else to that. Uh, the battle system's 
lackluster, I think. It's a little tedious with the menus and touching the menus. Also, my Wii U gamepad's, like, busted and always clicks randomly and, um, like, on the gamepad randomly. And for some reason, the fucking battle system thought it'd be a great idea to make it so you can block and do action commands with the touchscreen also. I don't know why. I don't know why you'd use the touchscreen. You have buttons all over the place. It's so dumb. Um, so you can't disable that. And sometimes I'll block when I don't want to block or I'll jump when I don't want to jump. It's just stupid. But, um... But yeah, basically the game's battle system, I would argue, is just better because it's less prevalent, which is really sad because it shouldn't be that way. Like, battling in Overworld was pretty, like, perfectly balanced in the old Paper Mario games. In Sticker Star, I I think it was trying to be balanced, but it was either you were stuck in the Overworld or you were having a horrible time in the battles, and... Color Splash, the battles are just kind of there, and that's not really a great thing, but, like, it makes it easy to play. It's not as much of a hassle to play. I think the most joy you're going to get out of this game is through the countless, you know, cutscenes and story elements and parts where you're interacting with people, light little puzzles you do, just kind of exploring and having a pretty good time playing it. I think when you start getting to like the logistics of things, like wondering if it's gonna challenge you, wondering if it's gonna, you know, be a grand experience like Thousand Year Door was in terms of like technicalities, you know, like actually strategic game and stuff, it's definitely not. And it's, I don't know. I think what really keeps me interested in it is its charm, is its humor. Its graphics are extremely nice, like extremely nice. Its music's really catchy. And it's just got a nice feel to it. It's just got a really, really nice, fun feel to it. it. And it's a game that I'm not really, again, I'm not taking too seriously, which is, which is again, a bad thing. I don't think that's a good thing. I think you should be able to take a game seriously and feel the same thing I'm feeling with this game. But just the idea that I like it, just that I'm having a good time playing it, is way more than I could say for Sticker Star. And I don't know, maybe it'll change. I'm only in the first world and I'm just finishing it. But... I like it a lot so far. I think I like it, like, like I don't know, like actually like it, <laughs> like not just tolerate it, not just like sort of like it. I actually do legitimately like this game so far, which is really really nice because it was such a disappointing feeling playing Sticker Star. I waited so long for that game and was so hyped for it. And it was just so disappointing when I finally played that game. Feels good to finally play a Paper Mario game and to def- and it, bleh, bleh, bleh. for me to say it feels like a Paper Mario game again and actually has the elements, the well, the aesthetic and charm elements that Paper Mario had before. It just makes me so happy. You don't understand, guys. <laughs> Coming from one of the biggest Paper Mario fans you could possibly meet and. These games literally hold the biggest place in my fucking life that uh, having one that I enjoy after one that I absolutely hated is very nice. So as it stands now, I like this game, and I am extremely happy that I do. So if you're thinking about picking it up, I recommend it. I, um, I can't say it's a perfect game. I can't say it's a game if you are interested in the RPG you know, strategic RPG aspects of Paper Mario. I can't say it's even interesting if you like if you like the core mechanics of a Paper Mario game. It'd be hard to recommend. I think if you're if you like Paper Mario for its charm, for its atmosphere, for its like whimsy, quote unquote, then I think this game is good. And I think you could enjoy it if you I can't believe I'm saying this. <laughs> if you turned your brain off or, you know, kinda turned your little like Paper Mario like brain off and just played it for the charm and fun that it is and it's such a i hate saying that because it's such a bullshit thing to say but it's definitely a game that's fun and cute and worth playing if you make it that way you can make it you could you could just look at this game and be like this isn't like the other ones boom and that's exactly what i was disappointed at in the beginning and i think this game is teaching me can you believe it can you believe a game is teaching me different things a game is teaching me to be a more accepting person and it's funny because like 
there are games that have come out that I didn't like that sh- I should have liked because everything else was there, like Star Fox Zero. But I think the gameplay was was too drastically different. Well, not drastically different, but just that gimmick that you know, the gimmick in Star Fox Zero was so drastically apparent that I couldn't really get into it like I could Star Fox, and. I think that's Color Splash's appeal is it's so simple. So it is easy to get into, and it is easy to see all of its niceness to it and not worry about anything else. So, yeah, I say buy it, but um, that's my recommendation. Maybe wait for it to go down in price if you're skeptical, but whatever the case, um, that was my first impressions of the game. Easily could change. I might make a last impressions or whatever review, I guess, then it becomes. But um, if not, then whatever. But... uh, yeah, I guess that's it. So, uh, Color Splash. Hopefully, I can't wait to play more of it when my gamepad starts working again. Again. Again.